Hey everyone, another two minutes went by and yet again the patriarchy failed to get a rape in. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diana Davison, a Canadian elf, eliminator of legal feminists. I'm going to talk today about a case involving Doreen Sorensen and Danny Lund. This is actually part two of chapter four in Elizabeth Sheehy's book, Defending Battered Women on Trial. I covered the first of those two trials from chapter four in my last video. Doreen and Danny fought a lot because they drank a lot. This is a common trait to many of these trials. But they had worked out a system. When things were getting worked up, Doreen would leave. She had in fact left him a number of times and gone back. But the new system was that she would just go to a friend's place and come back when they'd sobered up. Unfortunately, on the night of September 21st, 2003, the plan didn't work out so well. Danny blocked the door, according to Doreen, and it ended with his death. She stabbed him three times and he had multiple defensive wounds. Instead of calling 911, Doreen fled the house, disposed of the knife, and went to the home of a male friend. He helped her clean up all the blood from herself and uh, then she went off to another friend's house and told him that she'd committed this crime, um, but basically hid out for a bit. Um, so we're to believe from Sheehy's telling of the story. Her eldest daughter, uh, named Tracy Fiddler, was informed the day after the murder that Danny Lund was dead and she, suspecting that there was going to be trouble, flew from Flin Flan, Manitoba, yes, that's a real place, to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where her mother was living at the time. She arrived there about three days after the murder, and at that point, Doreen had already been into the police station and given two statements, which were kind of convoluted in content, but both times she denied having taken part in the events. She denied any responsibility for it. Now, Doreen was Aboriginal. Her daughter had become a uh, Jehovah's Witness, and um, I guess we're to believe that part of this religion, whether it was true or whether just Tracy was a very moral person, um, her daughter insisted that she go back to the police station and that she confess and she make right what had happened that night. So she accompanied her mother to the police station. The ultimate result is that Doreen is charged with second degree murder and she ends up being convicted of manslaughter. Yes, I'm happy to say that this is the first case in the book where the woman actually gets convicted of something. Now Elizabeth Sheehy is pretty pissed off. She figures this must not have been a fair trial because in the same chapter, the last case that I covered, the woman, there was many, many witnesses to the woman's violence and yet she got off with the murder charge. So how can this woman, who had no witnesses to her ever having been violent and in fact testified she was quite um, passive, how can she have been convicted of manslaughter? Surely there's something wrong with the system and this must not have been a fair trial. She ultimately ends up blaming the daughter, who she figures is a complete cunt for having assumed that her mother had something to confess because of course until the trial's done, we can't be sure she's guilty. How can the daughter say you must confess? We don't know that she's guilty at all. And the daughter surely didn't know anything. Her mother never told her anything about what actually happened. So this is all misdeeds of the daughter who forced her mother to go in and tell the truth. She's also annoyed that the daughter didn't um, find and hire a lawyer for her mother before having her go into the police station. I guess just having good morals and a desire to unveil the truth runs counter to Elizabeth Sheehy's idea of justice. She can't figure out why the jury convicted her and tells us a bit of a story about the trial transcripts. Now, keep in mind that these transcripts were purchased with a public grant. The grant was given to her because she was supposed to have uh, extreme professional um, capabilities and she was deemed to be somebody who was bringing enlightenment to the public through her work. So, with public funds, she he purchases these transcripts and then tells us that the first time Doreen Sorensen went to the police station was when her daughter hauled her in there and forced her to say something against her will. Now, we could believe that to be true, except for that there is a newspaper who was covering the story at the time, and for free, without a public grant, I was able to find the actual details from the trial, which surely are in the transcripts. And I'll quote that below. 
For comparison, Elizabeth Sheehy says, It was not the police who brought Sorensen in for questioning, but her daughter, Tracy Fiddler, who suspected that her mother had been involved in Lund's death and insisted that she make things right by speaking to the police several days after the homicide on 25th September. The Star Phoenix newspaper from Saskatoon reports, Three days after the death, Fiddler accompanied her mother to the police station, she said. By that time, Sorensen had given police two videotaped statements denying responsibility. On Thursday, court viewed the statement she gave the day of Lund's death, in which she cried and gave sparse conflicting information. So Elizabeth Sheehy used public grant money to get transcripts just so she could lie to us about their content. It's really stunning. And, in fact, there's a great word for it, fraud. Doreen Sorensen was convicted of manslaughter not because she had an unfair trial, but because she killed a man and then lied about it. She claimed she was merely trying to leave the house at the time and was waving a knife around, blindly and desperately, and was unable to explain how Danny ended up with four to five centimeter deep wounds that were actual stab wounds in his chest and in his back. She, he tells us in her book, for other reasons, she, she gives out the detail that there was blood all over the house. There was blood on the couch in the living room, in the bathroom sink, on the door handle in the hallway, and his body was ultimately found in the hallway within view of the front door. The fight started in the kitchen. Well, Sorensen only got three years for manslaughter, at least I can tell you that it's the first case in the book where the woman went to jail. And now for the Rape Joke of the Week, brought to us again by Nefinor. News Today had the headline, Woman Beats Off Attacker, and I thought, well, he didn't get to rape her, but at least he got a wank. 